What is going on, everybody? Uh, Josh and Aaron back from the Finley Mortgage team. Um, today we have a guest coming on. Uh, you know, we are there's a lot of hot buzz right now talking about the real estate market, interest rates, what's happening. Uh, the R word is being thrown around a ton. You know, the looming recession that's coming. Um, we want that R word. Yes, that R word. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, that is is happening, uh, and we wanted to bring on uh, a local boots on the ground expert, Milena Simsic. Milena is a real estate investor out of the Windsor area. Um, she also all ha is the owner or uh, founder. Founder. Of we have some details. So she's the founder of the Windsor Real Estate Investing Social and uh, Win Social Realty team with EXP Realty. She has a pretty good looking TikTok page as well, too, which we'll get some details for her for you guys to be able to follow in her socials and whatnot. But uh, we will get her to come on now and uh, we'll introduce her to you guys. Hey, guys. Melina, what's <laughs> going on? Oh, not too much. Thank you for uh, having me on today on your live. Super excited to be here and finally meet you. I've seen you kind of floating around TikTok as well, like the Finlay Mortgage team. So I, I have taken notice of you guys as well on TikTok. I could see you're making some really good quality content there. So um, TikTok could use more of that. So keep doing what you're doing. Um, and yeah, well, thank you for having me on. I'm excited to talk about like uh ontario real estate and just real estate in general it's my uh my passion so um yeah we appreciate that we've been it's our first foray into the TikTok world so we're uh we're working on, on throwing out some content um we've been on insta for a while but we're moving mm -hmm. into the uh the hip version the of hip, insta. yeah we had to be you know, we had to be cool with the social media and uh, make sure we're up to date so you know, when I first started it, everyone thought it was stupid and think people were still dancing on it. But um, businesses haven't quite caught a hold of TikTok yet. It's just so much potential there. So much potential left for, for businesses to grow their brand there. So, um, yeah, that's like I, I love the platform. Like it, it grew my business pretty quickly and I'm, I'm sure it'll I, I you guys are already pretty big. It'll help you grow even bigger. So, um, yeah, yeah. TikTok's the best, yay. <laughs> I mean, we thought YouTube and Instagram was mm -hmm. beyond a mortgage. Like, we just didn't really think there was anything tangible to show from a mortgage perspective. You know, we were like, okay, realtors, you guys can show some cool houses. You can do the walkthroughs. You have all these area views. And all we have is, like, just a bunch of numbers on a whiteboard. Who a wants paper. to do that? And, you know, it, like, it turned out to be you know, like one of the best things we did. So mm -hmm. we learned that. We decided to, you know throw the hate of TikTok out the window and decided to jump in and try it out and we're, we're awesome. catching up. So we're, we're getting there slowly. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, TikTok, I, yeah, TikTok's great. I think like Instagram and YouTube have like better conversion rates for clients. I think TikTok's just kind of a net to catch people in and then bring them to your more like established platform. So um, yeah, you guys already got like the established like YouTube channel and the Instagram. So you're doing pretty good there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's my experience with it. Hey, but um, yeah, on to like real estate. Sorry, I'm, I could go about TikTok like all day, but <laughs> no, it's, yeah, it's so important. it's, uh, you know, when we, when we have new agents come on and I know you're, you're new, this is about your second year in the industry and real estate. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting how real estate industry is changing as a whole and how people are consuming information in a different way and investors are learning in a different way and people are buying in a different way. And when we have right. new agents come on and we're, we're having them understand how important social media is in building their business as well. And, you know, it, it segue into real estate, you know, having, um, having an impact or having an ability to be able to touch many people and teach people. Um, I think there's a, there's a transition into how people are selling homes now. And you know, obviously we can see that with the new realtors and the new agents that are coming into the industry. Yeah. Um, there's definitely been uh, a lot of changes in, in real estate and like the, the social media field as well. Um, I think Windsor is like just starting to kind of catch up to it. There are like a lot of old fashioned uh, ideals over here, like making the thousand phone calls a day to get a client. And <laughs> I, uh, I, I couldn't do it. I wasn't buying into it. And um, so like the social media is like starting to take off for, for realtors and I would assume mortgage agents as well. 
And uh, yeah, I mean, it's a great way to like show your knowledge, grow your credibility, uh, get free exposure essentially. And uh, yeah, I mean, good way to, to run your business. So, um, but yeah, uh, in terms of like real estate, um, yeah, I, I, things have changed a lot for sure. Um, I like compared to earlier in the year, like we were kind of at the peak over there. Um, sorry, I'm like segueing from social media straight into no, real estate. I, I just want to, okay. yeah, I'll, I'll go on all day about social media if we stay on this topic. But <laughs> yeah, in terms of like the Windsor market, what I'm seeing over here, um, we've definitely like we've we've seen a peak in like February, March. And now we're um, I, I feel like we're starting to bottom out over here. Like we we had like no attention on the market here in August, beginning of September. And now things are starting to just pick up just a tad. If you notice the numbers, we went from like 520 in August to 523. So um, people are I, I, I'm not quite sure what you guys think, like um, talking about social media and the media in general, people are saying there's going to be a recession in 2023. So what uh, like what what are your thoughts on that? Sure. I think uh, you have to look at the definition of a recession. I think it's two negative growth quarters, quarter after quarter. And we're actually already past that. So um, it just depends on who you're asking. It, depends, it really <laughs> depends on who you're asking. If you're asking a politician, right. we're not in it yet. If you're asking like, you know, an economist, we're already in it. I think we do see a right. recession. I, I don't think there's really an easy way to put it. I think there's going to be a, a little bit more pain in the market before you start to see a recovery. Um, okay. Some of our lenders just increased, like there was fixed rates went up. Uh, I think it was last night, if I remember, or the night before. But so, you know, it was about 20 basis point, um, you know, rate hike there. You take a look at like Scotia's posted rates and you're essentially 6% across the board right now, whether you're owner occupied, you know, or on a rental. Um, the five year variable is just under. But I mean, we're all expecting at least I think a half a basis point is a little low. I think we're probably coming in around 75. But, you know, even at that half a half a percent 50 basis points you know we're going to be at six percent so i think there's a lot of talk of um you know like we're six percent across canada by next year and, and going into 2024 and um mm -hmm. you know, i think i think the little hints or the little comments that were made early in the year of you know rates kind of cooling by mid 2023 i think that you know that was just kind of your typical um political you know speeches just to kind of keep people from freaking out and then just slowly creep up and creep up and creep up. And, uh, you know, now we're, you know, we're here and we're just trying yeah. to figure out how to deal with it all. And some people are freaking yeah. out. And some people are, you know, excited because, you know, real estate prices are down 30% across the market and they see a great buying opportunity coming. So, you know, it's, it's depending on what side of the coin you're at, it's some different emotions, I think. Right. I think like cash is king right now for sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, the the prices have dropped like over 200k in Windsor from from the peak and I'm starting to actually see uh like cash flowing opportunities. Um I bought like a single family home around the peak because that was like the only way like I, I was going to do a duplex conversion. So I am doing it right now. So um that was the only way I could see making cash flow and getting like an ROI above 15% in that market is to actually build another unit. And now that's kind of changed in like in recent times, the past couple months, now you can actually buy a duplex or a multifamily and see some cash flow in Windsor. Um, so yeah, it's interesting, like kind of what's going on. People are, um, like at least my clients, like my investor clients are kind of half half as to what's happening. They see a great opportunity right now to buy. And I kind of agree with them while everybody else is scared. And then the other people, they're kind of waiting for that 2023 doomsday where everything's just going to crash and they're going to buy everything up. Um, so it's uh, I mean, it's it's interesting to see. At least like my philosophy is if you find something where the numbers make sense and they're starting to pop up more now, I like I would say go for it. Um, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a very interesting time, um, in, in the Ontario market. I just had an appraisal on a duplex come back a hundred thousand under where we thought the refinance was <laughs> going to come back. Oh no. That was fun. That was, was that in of... Windsor? Yeah, that was in, that was in Windsor. So, um, I hope it's only up from there. At yeah. That point. But, I think we see, yeah. you know, we have a rate hike coming, I believe, on the 26th, like 12 days from now. You know, 
I believe that there's going to be 75 basis points. I think uh, I was talking to a few of our larger lenders and private capital firms and they're pricing in a full point over the next, you know, six months in increase. The, the rhetoric and sentiment is that it does stop eventually. Well, they want overnight rate four and a half percent by the end of next year. So what is that point a quarter right now? Potential increase we're at three, three, two, five right now. Yeah, I think so. So, you know, potential another point. 1.25, yeah. one point to the, the overnight rate. So, which is huge. Like it, it is really interesting that you know, deals are still being done though. And I think it's important to understand as a professional in this industry that people always need value. So anybody who's watching this, who's a real estate agent or a broker or, or you know, mortgage agent, Coming from a place of value right now, coming from a place of helping people is going to be the way in which you know, you're going to be able to get business in this in this industry in this industry and in this um, market. You know, I personally, Aaron personally, we've never worked through a market like this. A lot of our lending partners that we dealt with who opened up you know, private capital firms and mix in the last seven eight years, yeah. never seen a down market like this. Um, you know, 2008 didn't see uh, a market that lost as much value this fast. It really is kind of unprecedented times. We've never seen anything really like this. Yeah, I uh, I agree. Um, I like. Do you do you guys think it's like a good if you were to buy like within the next six months? Would like would you buy now or, or do you think like you would buy um, a little bit later? Like do you do you guys think that we might have a crash in twenty twenty three? I'm planning on buying at the start of twenty twenty three. I think yeah. that the interest rates are going to go up and by the start, like end of Q1 of 2023, I think the majority of the pain is out and a lot of inventories in the market and mm -hmm. uh, focusing specifically on multifamily, like larger multifamily buildings. I think that um, some people who bought a little while ago are going to be over leveraged. They're going to be getting squeezed on variable terms and they're going to want to sell and cap rates are going to expand. There's going to be a lot of opportunity in the market. And, we're seeing that the best assets right now that are holding value are multifamily assets, you know, ones mm -hmm. that are cash flowing and, and rent has increased at so, such a rapid rate in the last six months that, you know, any sort of increase in cap rate is being offset by the, the market rent on these properties. I think it's a phenomenal opportunity. And um, a lot of our investors are sitting on the sidelines waiting for those opportunities, probably at the start of next year. I think it's like kind of what you mentioned earlier, you know, like, if you're doing your due diligence and you find a deal and the numbers look like they work and you know you're excited about it and everything checks out then you know there's nothing wrong with pulling the trigger on that deal i think um you know one thing that you can easily get caught up in is just that analysis paralysis if you're trying to factor in a whole bunch of timing and you know how far down in the market are we are we going to fall further where the rate's going to be um you know i think that's something that people definitely need to try to avoid so i think have your numbers, you know, um, talk to your broker, have an idea of where your affordability is at, have your team ready to go and, and your funds. And if you see a deal and it makes sense, there's nothing wrong with, with pulling the trigger, you know, like your affordability point and your comfortability is going to be different than what somebody else is going to be, um, you know, in the market. So you, you can't be really tied up in trying to compare your buying times with other people's bearing, uh, buying times, or you're just, you're, you're, you're going to put yourself in a sticking point. So, um, like right. is the market going to fall further? You know, it might, um, you know, there's some places that are holding up a bit more in the secondary markets than some of the major markets are. So, I mean, it depends where you're looking, um, but, you know, like it's, it's, you know, it's time to top a market, uh, time, tough to time a market either up or down. So, you know, just yeah. keep your eyes out for the good deals. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> I, um, I remember working in like February, March and nothing, absolutely nothing was making sense. And I was talking to, um, a TD commercial, uh, commercial agent and he, he, uh, he said a lot of the deals that went through in February, March for the larger multifamilies, they were not able to get financing for them because like the, the cap rates that they were basing them on were incredibly low at the the time they bought it like it was insane like the cap rate in windsor back then for for those larger multifamilies. like i saw stuff go for like three percent which is which is insane you know you might as well invest in like an index fund at that point or something instead of going through all the trouble um but yeah it it was like it it was quite crazy and um now we're starting to see like in the same areas where you would have found the three you're starting to see like five percent now at least for what they're selling um 
and I like I hope that goes up like I would love to see more opportunities in the commercial space here in Windsor um because yeah the prices were ridiculous ridiculously high and some people's expectations are still kind of in February March so that's uh another issue right now um but yeah yeah yeah, all the sellers' I, what is, expectations from February, all the buyers have expectations yeah. of right now. Well, you were like, <laughs> the GVA was at like a 2% cap and GTA was like 2.5%. So it's like when you're buying and, you know, these markets are at 2, 2.5 two cap, where mm -hmm. does it go from there? How do you reposition a 3.5 cap building, 3 cap building in Kitchener, Windsor, Waterloo, whatever? Like you're telling me mm -hmm. that these major markets have to get down to a 1.5, one, 1 cap? Like it's just it's not going to happen. And yeah, you know, like they've expanded a little bit. Um, but I think, you know, the problem is, I think the problem is that people are still buying. Sellers are still able to sell. It's taking a little bit longer. They're sitting on the market for a little bit, but it, a lot of these guys don't necessarily have to sell. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of the bigger buildings, you know, were purchased probably over 10 years ago. So the equity on them is, you know, quite substantial. A seller is not going to, you know, blink at sitting on the market for an extra 30 days. It means he gets his extra, you know, million dollars out of it. And, you know, if it sits on there long enough, there's going to be someone with some cash who's going to come along and see it as an opportunity and buy it and be able to put that 40% down. So I think that's the thing is that, you know, a lot, there's a majority of the investors who aren't buying, but, or can't afford to maybe buy at that price. But, you know, the smaller few who can have the money and they are doing it and the sellers are seeing themselves. So they're not as... You know they're a little bit reluctant to give up that that sale price and it's holding on to the value a little bit or onto that yeah. selling price at least that's fair yeah i've um i've seen a, a lot of crazy buys in like the single family space over here like there were a lot of people coming to windsor for the single family homes and um like i i had not my clients personally but i had um clients approach me from when they bought back in february march and uh their interest rates have risen since then and now they're like negative cash flow on these homes like 800 to over a thousand negative with the tenant in there it's insane yeah. um it's yeah it's it doesn't make sense to buy these like i see i saw this post going around the other day i'm sure both of you did too is like you know that mm -hmm that buy on that multi on that single family home where that duplex like that cash flow that you have isn't mm -hmm. really cash flow when in you know two years you have to pay for a three thousand dollar water heater and two thousand bucks to get somebody out and a thousand bucks to fix it there goes all your cash flow like you know mm -hmm. as an investor like are you really making you're not making any cash flow on these properties it doesn't make sense building up deferred maintenance costs <laughs> at that point like i think too, like, you definitely you yeah. have to take the maintenance into account for sure. Like I, I have a real estate calculator that I, I get for free, by the way, in my link tree, if anybody wanted to see it, where like yeah. I actually take the maintenance into account and there's different ranges for how old the property is. So um, yeah, yeah, maintenance is definitely something you have to take into account on a monthly basis for um, like for your properties. And I have separate bank accounts for each of my properties as well. So there's always a reserve. I do recommend a reserve and you're kind of forced to in the, in the commercial space for, for certain deals. So, um, yeah, I, I agree. Um, I, at least like for my last couple deals, like I, I was able to make cash flow off of them. Um, the last one was a single family duplex conversion. So that one made a lot of sense at the time because um, duplexes back back then were running in like the six, 700 range and it made no sense. And I can make my own duplex for under 500 K from a single family home and it would be turnkey and ready. So um, I mean, yeah, definitely like it depends property to property and you, you definitely have to take maintenance into consideration and a lot of investors don't for sure. I feel like not saving for deferred maintenance is like being a business for sell person and just like spending all your money and then being hit with a tax bill at the end of the year. And you're like, Oh yeah. I, have to pay for this? <laughs> I, have, I forgot about this part. Like <laughs> I didn't make all this money. That's right. Yeah. yeah I mean, the like, government made that money. <laughs> yeah. HSD. You know, you're going to have some repairs coming along at some point. You may have just renovated your building, but all you're doing right. is pushing it down the road. And yeah, I mean like, even on just like a basic bird, you know, like when you're running your numbers at a purchase price and you're estimating or guesstimating, or maybe not even guesstimating what your cash was going to be on that refinance, 
as soon as you hit that first refi, you've already lost probably 20% of your cash flow. Like you lose a, a, a big chunk when you do that, that, um, that burn, you take that equity back out. So, I mean, you're already losing cash flow right away. And, and yeah, I mean, I think, I think single family homes, um, like I was talking to somebody the other day and, uh, they were saying that they a contact of theirs is associated with like a fund and it's like a billion dollar fund and they're already buying back up single family homes, um, you know, in the Ontario market. And it, it's, it's tougher, you know, home buyers to be able to compete when you have, you know, liquid heavy investors and, you know, mm. billion dollar funds that just lend up a balance sheet and, you know, you're just, you know, kind of stuck there trying to, to get in off your, your, um, your standard salary. So I think it's, you know, it, the prices it's, it's going to be, you know, it's going to, get driven back up it's going to remain competitive i think it's going to push first-time buyers into you know like they're going to get forced to house hack they're going to have to look at a duplex triplex fourplex and try to just find the way to be able to get that additional rental income to help qualify um right. you know, the market's going to remain tough i think there's all the factors that make it great for a great market for multifamily are going to be the factors that make it really tough for single family homes all the immigration mm -hmm. that's coming in and you take a look at all exactly. the working immigrants versus the working Canadians, you know, the, the working immigrants easily, you know, make probably 30, 40 more than what the average Canadians, you know, in terms well, of competing for homes. The immigrants they come over here, they come educated. Like a lot of them come yeah. into Canada because they have some sort of education and they make a higher income. So yeah, there, there are going to, you're absolutely right. And I have clients that um, have recently come into Canada and buying their own homes and they're working professionals. And um, yeah, there, there's going to be a lot more competition in the market for mm -hmm. sure with the immigration coming in. And um, yeah, I, I think like we're, we, we still don't quite have the supply yet and um speaking of like windsor specifically too like we have so much development going on that's major like bigger than a lot of other uh cities in ontario like we have that Stellantis battery plant that's going to bring 2,000 employees to an area the mega hospital uh the bridge that's going to be completed soon uh an amazon warehouse like there's just so many people coming over here too so um and not even from like an immigration standpoint either. And we're like a university and college town as well, or city. Yeah. I keep thinking town, like we're not that small anymore. <laughs> I was born and raised here. It definitely wasn't like this like 20 years ago. Um, but yeah, so it's, uh, you're, you're absolutely right. Like the immigration coming into Canada, um, there's gonna be a lot coming to Ontario, um, a lot going to Alberta. And they're going to look for more affordable places, Windsor, uh, Southern Ontario, Al Alberta, obviously, like is a pretty affordable place uh, at the moment. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah so have you seen those, uh, those ads, those ads that uh, Alberta started running in downtown Toronto, where they're, they're trying to get people to come and, uh, and live, live in uh, Alberta. Is no. it like the pre-con, the pre-con uh, ads? Like where I they're there was a few it was like it was like uh one was one was about waiting in the subway it was really really witty and smart it's like you don't have to do this in alberta or like are you tired of working for for this job where you can make more money doing this and they had them plastered all over toronto are you tired That's of so wandering the streets scared at night and your way home from work <laughs> you <laughs> just gave me an <laughs> Yeah. I'm gonna put my like ad in the middle of Dundas Square to get everyone to come to Windsor. It's like, are you sick of traffic in Toronto? Come to Windsor, where, where we're like a third of the price and <laughs> a lot cozier. Yeah, there? that's smart of them. I, I lost like a couple of investors to Alberta back in February, March, and I couldn't blame them. I'm like, I mean, the numbers made so much more sense over there at the time. So I think I did. Um, mm -hmm eight like eight or ten properties in alberta this year like like i had a ton of investors buying but you know like, they were getting duplexes for like 358 four hundred thousand yeah. dollars and they were like nice looking duplexes and you're not getting duplexes in in you know like a big city in ontario like it was like calgary alberta like right in the middle yeah <laughs> vanessa helped us out thank you the i just saw was... that the mountain is calling i, I remember it now I... <laughs> yeah, we do need a Jamie. We have a Peter. Yeah, Peter, Peter pull it up. Here, Jamie. There, there we go. Has. Jamie's pulling it up. He's got it. What do we got? What did the Burton say to the Torontonian? You're hired. <laughs> that is so petty. I love it. An account. 
an engineer, accountant, and plumber walk into a province. They get, they all get jobs. Oh my god! Yeah, Alberta oh was god. Alberta was shooting its shot last month. They uh, they, oh, they know that people are feeling the squeeze in Ontario. Bigger paychecks. Oh, wow. I, I mean, these are pretty solid ads. I'm I'm impressed. Yeah, they did a good job. There was a lot of controversy I, around it. I, I love. Calgary. I mean, it's true. It is kind of true. I, I can't blame them. <laughs> okay, yeah, Calgary is great. Uh, Melina, you said that you started your uh, your team. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your team? You, you know, you work for EXP, yeah. EXP. I see you guys everywhere. Like, I know you guys, I think you just had your conference in Las Vegas this weekend or this week. Correct, um, yeah. And you, uh, you tell us about it. Yeah, for sure. So um, EXP Realty is a pretty big online brokerage across North America. It's very quickly growing. Um, I decided to go on EXP so I could eventually build my own team. And I did. I, I just brought on two team members this past week. And um, details are coming out next week. So I can't quite tell you too much about that yet. But um, so, yeah, so EXP, um, lots of opportunity there. They have like the lowest um, like cut that I could find out of any brokerage. And it makes sense because they're online. There's no physical office. Uh, but like there's there's definitely a lot of room for growth there. And um, it's relatively easy to hire agents under you and to build your own brand under this team or under this brokerage. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm really liking it. I'm already bringing on team members like within my first year of becoming a realtor. Um, the social media has helped a lot in bringing in uh, a lot of leads and getting attention in the Windsor market because social media isn't quite as utilized in um by windsor realtors as much it, as much as it is in toronto you guys like the, the realtors em. over the uh, <laughs> don't tell them <laughs> don't, <laughs> it's okay <laughs> they can they can uh they can give it a shot but it's um yeah so yeah i i grew pretty quickly over here like thanks to um exp and um you know the social media thing and uh yeah i i'm liking it uh, the only thing that I, I didn't like um, is you have to be a little more independent. Like you have to find information on your own. There's not going to be any handholding unless you get a good sponsor, you know, that um, yeah. if you're if you're under someone that actually mentors you. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, I like if you're getting into EXP, I recommend find a good team leader um, or a good sponsor uh, to kind of guide you through it. If you're a brand new agent your experience you you should get the hang of it relatively quickly so um yeah so starting my own team and um i i'm also running uh real estate investor events monthly where we give all proceeds to cmha charity so that's been pretty big we've had big names there like uh seth ferguson kyle mcdonald uh claire drage i don't know if you know her she's a yeah, big no, big agent as well. yeah she's she was awesome like all of them fantastic speeches and um it's starting to gain traction lots of windsor investors coming there people from all over ontario coming there as well every month so um yeah uh it's and my next one is on the 19th as well so if you guys are in windsor feel free to to come on in okay. we're gonna Ooh. have um our tiny home guy in windsor clark galley talking there so there you go is there a cost is it like do people have to sign up ahead of time to show up or they just show up or what's how do they well, most people buy tickets like day home to be honest but yeah there there are tickets involved like you pizza's included in your ticket and the rest goes to charity so most uh most real estate investors don't mind the the 20 dollar investment to yeah. be able to <laughs> to you know uh sit with a bunch of other investors yeah that sounds good we have uh that, that's amazing you know thank you uh thanks for putting that on you know having those social meetups is so important and if you're looking to get into yeah. investing your network is really where your opportunities are going to show up guys if you guys are watching looking exactly. how are you going to invest in real estate i don't know all the answers i don't know if you don't need to know everything you need to get in a room with people who know things and all those people have either made mistakes or they know people who have made mistakes enough to probably guide you to your first deal so you know going to events like what Milena is doing um, or you know any other social, social event out there for real estate investors, it's going to give you a lot of exposure on on deals and possibly even maybe find you a deal or a JV opportunity. I think that's right. a great segue actually into one of the questions that we just had, which is how do you you know potentially prepare for the recession if you're looking to invest in real estate? And I think one thing that you could do is talk to an investor that had been through a previous you know recession and, and what did they do and what were the strategies and 
you know, what were some of the signs and signals that they look for? Um, you know, it's something that we've done on our side is just talk to our lenders on the bank side, talk to our lenders on the private lending side, talk to some of our investors and just say, Hey, like, you know, we haven't been through this, but you know, you guys have, what did you see? What were some of the patterns? How, you know, quickly did it seem to correct? What did it look like coming out of it? And, uh, you know, just to try to help us prepare and, and give the best advice, you know, to our borrowers and our partners in the industry. And, um, you know, I think it's, it's something that we just we've continuously kind of been talking about but obviously just you know as all three of us have said stay as liquid as possible um if something does come up you know you want to be able to pull the trigger um you don't want to have to try to lock the deal up condition of financing and then go out and source some down payment and you know potentially lose the deal that way so you know have your jv partners ready have your capital partners ready your mortgage brokers your insurers your realtors everybody like that so um you know just you know, learn as much as you can, um, mm -hmm. get as prepared as you can and just start running numbers and don't be, you know, scared to make, um, uh, the move on deals that make sense. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I'd say like you know, managing cash flow expectations on your portfolio too. Um, this probably should have been done about three or four months ago mm -hmm. when we started seeing interest rates go up. But if you have a full variable portfolio, understanding what those interest rate hikes are about to do to your portfolio, like, are you just cash flowing or are you, um, in risk of being negative cash flow. And some some clients are coming to us now, and it probably is a little bit too late now if you have multiple properties that are just about to be underwater. Um, and you know, locking into a fixed rate, you're guaranteeing a loss, but if you're not going into a fixed rate right now, you're you don't know where how much downside is. It, it's a tough conversation to have, but mitigating your uh, your cash flow loss um, for a prolonged period of time. Uh, so just. Mm -hmm take a finger on the pulse on that because um, things happen very quickly as everybody has just seen six months ago, we were giving away 3% loans and now we're at six and a half percent loans. So. Um, yeah, I agree. I think, um, I think people need to um, run their numbers conservatively for sure in this market. And so, like you said, uh, be prepared to pull the trigger within the next six months, like have your ducks in order um, to, you know, to take an opportunity when you see it, because I, I think there are going to be a lot of opportunities within the next six months for sure. Um, especially like, especially in Windsor, I, I personally can't see Windsor staying low for too long again, because of all the stuff we have going on here, like the mega hospital might even rival London's at this point. And that's a little further in the future, but if you're looking at making a long-term investment, um, I think, you know, at least Windsor right now is a, a good opportunity. Um, not to be biased, you know, I, w I was born and raised here and I'm a realtor here, but like just looking at what's going Buy on, I, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, come by with me. I need the yeah. It's a, yeah, you know what I mean. But um yeah, I I think the city has a lot of potential. And yeah, like what considering like uh the, the market right now, I think the next six months are gonna make millionaires within the next ten years. So I think, um I think yeah, you're right. It's it's interesting to to see what's going on. Agreed. I, I think that there is gonna be a lot of pressure for a short period of time. And mm -hmm. you know, this is very man-made. This isn't something that uh, is coming from, you know, uh, a source. This is something that our government or our bank has created to be able to stop inflation. Uh, right. I think as soon as they right take they created inflation. Wait, well, yeah, as soon mm -hmm. as they take a finger off the pulse, I think obviously the housing market goes back. Um, right. Yeah, real, you're right. Yeah. This is an outside circumstances. I think um, I think they overestimated what um, like the economic impact that COVID would have. I don't like. There's a lot of theories behind there, and I'm sure there's um, some uh, you know insider theories about it too. But yeah, I like that. I think they overestimated what COVID would do to the economy and uh, kind of made money free <laughs> for the last couple years and. Um, a lot of like a lot of people like I think the best time to buy was beginning of 2021 because that was before prices really started to skyrocket and the interest rates were still low there. Um, yeah, so it, it's um, yeah we got some catching up to do in terms of like <laughs> combating inflation for sure. What a wild time to be alive! Just think about that for mm. a second. We had nine we had point nine nine percent rates yeah. 
it free mm-hmm. money with 30% appreciation on assets. Not getting that anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> Craziness. <laughs> You know, I agree. Gonna ask us our first years in real estate where we're going to tell them like we had the world's most craziest peaks and drops. Yeah, I bought this thing called the board ape and it went to like a gazillion dollars. Like, that's <laughs> essentially what happened. Like, it's just, yeah, people could just go don't wrong. do anything. That's, that's the problem, though, is that, you know, we we bred two, gener- not two generations, two years of new investors that essentially couldn't fail. And then, you know, uh, mm-hmm. a big giant black cloud came in and like mm, messed up a whole lot of projects and called reality learned, learned really quickly <laughs> yeah. that you know, like it's you know real estate as you know secure and as safe as an investment it is it's still an investment and you know it has a cycle like a stock well it has a cycle similar to what a stock market's going to go through it's just you know your peaks and crests are a lot different um you know so it's uh and i mean like you got to take a look at the history of real estate as well too there's you have peaks and then you have, you know, fallouts, you have mm-hmm. higher peaks and fallouts and you have higher peaks and fallouts and it's a pattern, you know, like it, it, it happens. I think it's every five, Ten. five or six, well, recessions are like every like eight, but I think like a pattern of real estate, it's every like six, six, seven, eight years, mm-hmm. your 2009, 2017, and then 2000 and like 22. So you're like around like that five to five to seven years. But I mean, like it, it happens, you know, real estate can only hold on to so much pressure of, of upward driving forces before, you know, there needs to be a cooling down period. You can't get to a point where you're having, you know, 50% growth every year, 60% growth every year. Like if we continued on the trajectory that we were going on, real estate would have been unaffordable in the next like two, three years. Like it would have just been out of everybody's reach. Like it has to, it has to correct a little bit. Yeah. Um, right. I agree. Make- yeah. Yeah, it's uh, I think like, I mean, in in any market, I think it's definitely important to run your numbers. And what I what I like about real estate, like compared to stocks is you have a lot more control of the company, like instead of the company, you have a property. So you could do things to the property to like force its value to go up, you can, um, you know, control the way you put money into it. Um, unlike a stock and definitely we have the ebbs and flows. I, I do like real estate just because there's more control there. So, you know, you can add another unit to a building, you can renovate it, you can, you know, do so many things to it that you wouldn't be able to do to like a, a company you buy a stock of, unless you're like a major shareholder or something. But, um, yeah, so I, uh, yeah, I, I think, um, I think we should take it seriously. Like, definitely. I, I agree with you. Like, it's an investment. It's a, you, you got to run your numbers. You have to be careful with it. Yeah. The, the, the motto of like, it's not going to fail. Just, yeah. I think everyone thought that it just, it wasn't going to fail. And uh, obviously, you know, not that it failed, it but did. it definitely corrected. And it's just, it's just a reminder. It's, it's a reminder yeah. of how, Mm-hmm. just how big the game of real estate is and there's just so much more that goes into real estate than what a lot of people who are involved in it really understands and uh mm-hmm. you know you got to take a step back you got to understand that you know you really are investing in an economy in a sense um you know because that's what's that's what's truly going to affect your your asset outside of you know the bit that you can force appreciate it but you, know, you, mm-hmm. you can't unfortunately um you know force appreciate out the depreciation of a downward market like we're seeing right now. So yeah, um, yeah. I think that's where strategies th- are going to have to change. Like, you know, a burr, a, a, a regular burr is going to have to become some sort of um, duplex conversion or infill type thing. Like that's going to become a basic burr. It's not going to be new countertops, floorings and fixtures. It's going to be, mm-hmm. you know, new units. It's going to be tearing down the duplex and, you know, rezoning, getting into medium density and building a five to eight unit building. Like that's going to become the new burr simply because that's what's going to be able to be needed to be able to increase the value enough to be able to get any of your uh, expenses back out. Um, and plus just the huge value add that it has. You know, there's a lot of great programs out there now. We have the MLI Select program. There's the standard CMHC um, program that's available. We have great options with our B commercial lenders that are going to allow you to cover your costs and stuff like that. So, um, you know, it's going to be a growing period. Investors are going to have to learn what do they have to do their own self, their own um, borrow recovered and make themselves look a little bit stronger, stay as liquid as possible and start thinking a little bit bigger than, you know, single family duplex conversions. And now thinking, you know, Hey, we have half a million immigrants coming every year. And, uh, you know, the government's not doing anything to help 
um, our development, we're going to have to start doing it ourselves. And these medium to high density conversions are people are going to have to start stepping up and, and doing more of that to contribute back. Yeah, watching the segue of how investment is going to change over time is going to be really interesting. Like the last two years, flipping was the thing. If you threw anything at a wall, it's stuck. You made money. As we, as like, you know, asset prices increase and as, you know, affordability becomes a challenge for most people because the total gross annual household income just isn't able to support debt anymore. I foresee the majority of investors going to commercial real estate, that whole multifamily space of being able to afford and truly scale into an investment style, like a, a portfolio, like it's all going to go commercial. It's all going to be based off debt servicing ratios. Um, and you know the the investor the, the average investor is kind of going to get phased out it's going to become either all or nothing i think again you have two you have probably two cycles before regular residential real estate becomes unaffordable and we saw that in february where mm -hmm. mass hysteria like i'll never be able to own a home i quit you know the average millennial was like fuck it the game's over um mm -hmm. but like the cycles as Aaron said you know, or they'll happen. And after two more cycles, I don't think we see any more residential real estate that's affordable. Well, that's like, you're looking like potentially, let's call it 15 years from now. That's mm -hmm. I'm 46, I'm mid forties. And, you know, real estate becomes like an heirloom thing, at least like residential one, maybe two unit real estate becomes heirloom. But, um, you know, like just the standard detached home becomes a luxury home just because you have a backyard, a front yard, and you're not attached to another property, right? Like the definitions mm -hmm. of real estate is going to start to change a little bit in terms of what's considered luxury and what's you know not considered luxury is the standard house i guess so mm -hmm. uh, yeah I, I, yeah I, it's gonna come quick i was gonna say like the the windsor market has changed so much the past three years and like when you mentioned the luxury thing um i had some clients that haven't like looked into real estate in like five to ten years in windsor and in windsor our properties were dirt cheap i'm talking like you could get a mansion here for like 400k it was insane and so now like i i had clients that come to me and they're expecting that same thing and um like the things that like we've considered luxury now are not quite yeah. <laughs> like luxury any like compared to back then so um i could see like that shift in windsor right now at least like i i think we were um undervalued for quite a long time and i could only imagine like how um like the toronto toronto or even like cambridge is like like an entirely different feel over there as well and um like you said after two cycles um i i don't even know like what level toronto or you know the surrounding areas will be in um compared to windsor um but yeah. So, um, yeah, housing has, is definitely going to be hard to afford for the next generation, I think. But we can't keep building single family homes, uh, at least like full detached yeah. single family homes. I think the semi detached is are only going to go for, you know, I don't know how much longer we can keep building those because zoning density is going to be the big target of, uh, of concern. And, you know, we're going to start building upwards. We can't, you know, can't just keep plotting single units. You gotta right. start building higher density. So I think it's only a matter yeah. of time before we start seeing um, 76 is huge. Yeah, it's 76 percent on value. Well, I guess it depends on what you're considering. That's 76 percent from. But oh yeah, I, I read that. That was that that title. That whole 76 percent overvalued. If you actually read the article, that the clickbait article. Uh, it. It, it doesn't, it's not actually saying it's 76% overvalued, but. Um, oh, I didn't see it yet. No, yeah, oh. it's uh, all, hmm. all this media that's coming out saying, you know, with these clickbaity headlines, it's, uh, it's definitely very pessimistic towards what's happening right now. And it's almost like they, they just, they grab something and they run with it because obviously it, just, yeah. it, it sells. And a lot of people are just misinformed of what's actually happening. Like, you know, from peak to trough, I mean, like, sure, like we're, we're down a ton. But if you go over year over year, we're not down that much. I think some yeah. some places are even up still. Some people places mm -hmm. are up two or three percent year over year. You know, average right. average inflation. I mean, average uh, appreciation of an asset. So, mm -hmm. um, but no one's talking about that because it doesn't sell any uh, it doesn't sell any news and people aren't scared. So, um, you know, right. it's our job as professionals to be able to advise people correctly on what's actually happening in the market. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, it's outlier years, but uh, I don't think there's. I any think yeah. 
I, I was going to say the best time to buy is when people are scared. <laughs> so, yeah, lots of no lots of opportunities there. there. Why? Not a bad opportunity to buy. Yeah, and I think, I think like, summarizing our conversation, I think there's never a perfect opportunity to buy, but um, when the numbers make sense, you know, take that opportunity. There's a lot of investors right now that are focusing on staying liquid, being prepared for probably six to eight months of hard times. We're, sp we're about to see a ton of inventory on the market. There's going to be some great buying opportunity. As a buyer and as an investor, you're going to have a lot of opportunity to put conditions in an offer, to maybe get a VTB, to be creative. Talk to your broker about being creative. Talk to your real estate agent about finding really cool opportunities. Um, if there's ever a time to buy, it's going to be right now. Fortunes are made in the down market. And for ones who understand how to play this market properly, you're going to make an incredible amount of money over the next 10 years if you start make, buying opportunities right now. Right. I 100% agree. Uh, um, yeah, so definitely buy now within the next uh, year is what I would say. I, I'm definitely planning on buying a bigger project soon. So yeah, um, yeah. so I, I, I see like a lot of my investor clients coming back to Windsor right now. They kind of left in February, March, and I don't blame them because I mean, I couldn't even justify the prices then. Um, and now they're, they're coming back. Um, they were starting to see more cash flow opportunities, um, more burr opportunities over here as well. So um, yeah, it's it's interesting to see. You know, when a lot of investors start coming back, I feel like um, it, it might be a good time to buy. So um, yeah, I mean, definitely uh, the this next year is gonna is gonna be uh, where millionaires are made. I com completely agree. I, we have one question we're going to answer really quick and then we'll wrap up. Darcy, what would you focus on as a new investor right now? Uh, if I was a brand new investor and I had the ability to choose anything, I would do a owner occupied fourplex. I put 10% down and I would focus on having as many units as possible with as little cash as possible. If I was looking to get in right away, that would allow you to be able to make some strategic renovations to the property, have a completely cash flowing asset. And then when you are looking to move on to you know, personal residence or whatever it might be, you can still go purchase another property at 5% down. Um, for, for my first one, I did an owner occupied six unit for, um, yeah, I got that from RBC on a residential mortgage, nice. luckily. Uh, yeah. So that was, that was good. Yeah. I do agree. The house hacking is definitely a great thing. It would also depend on like what your goals are and your position. Um, maybe he has a house that already has equity and he can maybe go into the commercial space. Um, yeah, definitely depends on your goals there. Um, but yeah, my goals at the time were cash flow and to create as much wealth as possible as quickly as possible. Um, so yeah, house hacking definitely is a good option. I agree. Yeah, Melina, it has been an absolute pleasure chatting today. You know, watching all your success and hearing about it, it's uh, it is it's exciting to see you know all these new investors and new agents and new brokers coming into the space, adding value. It's uh, it's phenomenal. Thank you so much for coming on today and chatting with us. Um, if anybody does want to reach you, how can they reach you? Uh, you can go to my Linktree, so Linktree uh, slash Melena Simsic, or uh, on my Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. I'm on all the platforms. It's all under my name, Melena Simsic. Phenomenal. Thanks so much, guys. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to either Aaron or myself. You guys know how to reach out to us, either Instagram, Facebook, or our contact information is going to be down below. Okay. Take care. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Bye. Bye.